Hello. Hey. You got me on the run. You got me on the spin. Oh, I wanted nice. to get a real good point oh. right when it changed. Yeah. They're all gonna turn out. We'll time it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will. We'll time it next time. Mike, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, man. I'm sorry. I look like. A national Italian hockey player. <laughs> I didn't mean for this to happen. I like that imagery, though. It was My nice. hair was greasier than I, I thought it would be by the time I got here. So uh-huh. I, I feel like I, I messed up. And I'm no, I'm, well, I'm more curious. Do, would you watch a lot of Italian hockey? Not a lot. Okay, just enough just, to know just, they all look like okay. this. <laughs> just enough for context. You gotta wait till the helmet comes off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, everybody. Yeah, throw it across the <laughs> ice rink. For everybody who's joining us, you guys probably know Mike Falzone, but if you don't, what, tell, who are you? Hello, I'm I'm Mike Falzone. I don't know how they're supposed to know me. Yeah, yeah. They, you do YouTube videos. You make jokes. Yeah. You like wrestling. You yeah, do yeah, yeah. long hair. Those are all my most famous traits. <laughs> those are the four. <laughs> they're the top of your Twitter. If you're looking up on Wikipedia, those <laughs> are the things that pop up. I don't have any television credits. <laughs> yes, you do. You're on a TV show, right? Uh, not like a cable TV show. Still cool, Ooh, though. I'm not the was school. it Italian hockey? <laughs> it was Italian house party <laughs> hockey edition. Uh-huh. Uh, no, I was on the show called Coming to the Stage, hosted by George Wallace. Very mm-hmm. cool. And that was fun. Uh, I don't know how many people saw it, but I saw it, so I knew that it <laughs> happened. That's so cool. But we, on this segment, it's called What You're Into, and we yeah. want to talk about what you're into, mm-hmm. and we know that you're a stand-up comedian, and we mainly want to know what that's like. There's some questions there. You can I like uh, this part. With Michael, I wrote this Fal- part. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, this is Michael Fal- Fal- we've known each other for eight years. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I pulled it. I pulled all this straight from Wikipedia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I commented on that before you got here. He was like, I, I like that. You. I called him Michael. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very I wanted, official. I wanted yeah. him to like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do like it. Thank you. Well, that's good to know from a stand-up comedian. <laughs> you, uh, I do like it, and it's very funny, Sam. <laughs> Thank you very much, Michael. Uh, so how long have you been doing stand-up comedy? Uh, probably like nine or ten years now. I started in Connecticut, but there's very few places to go in Connecticut. Mm-hmm. So you would have to go write jokes alone in your room if you're me. And then you would have to drive or take the train to New York City like an hour and a half away. Gross. To go do... Uh, to, was that for New York? Or the, the, the travel the time. Travel <laughs> time. <laughs> Trains are nice, though. Train. I shouldn't throw shade at the train. Train travel's nice. Yeah, train yeah. Will, you'll lose a fight with a train in a second. <laughs> uh, but it was just like a long distance to be able to do anything like uh, substantial. Yeah. So then I got real sick, and then I got better, and then I moved out here, and now I do it like every night. You're like, forget you traveling to... New York once a week. I'm going to move all the way to LA. Yeah, just, one travel real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just get it over with. Pull that band aid right, right off. Right. Move away from everyone you love and care about. I have a generic question about this to ask you. What, what, what got you, you started? What, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you read my mind. But no, I do want to know why when you went to your first uh, joke place. Yeah. Comedy club. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did the definitely yeah, genuinely yeah. blank on what yeah. that was yeah. called. Yeah. Yeah. Where Jim Carrey got to start the joke store. The joke store, go. yeah. Basically, what he's trying to ask is, when did you decide it was fun to go and have people hate you being on stage? Um, like, just soak that in. Mm-hmm. Well, that was uh, surprisingly not that fun, but it is what happens for <laughs> yeah. the first couple of years. Uh, no, I was just a musician for a long time, and eventually I fell out of love with the writing and the playing of the songs and I fell into love with the talking to people in between songs yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I was like oh that they already have a name for that <laughs> and then I, I just started learning like joke structure um, this woman Christine O'Leary taught me how to write a joke and then I've been doing that ever since that's super can cool. you tell us how to write a joke, or is it like a trade? Is it like magic? No, you, can't you have share to pay Christine the... O'Leary three hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. That's good. That's I don't want to. I don't want to yeah, fuck her business. We'll, yeah, put, exactly. we'll put her URL in the chat <laughs> yeah. so we can all take the class. <laughs> so that had to have helped that you were already doing stage stuff with music, so you're used yeah, to the whole crowds like and like getting them on your side. Trying, yeah, 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 yeah. trying yeah. so hard. Yeah, trying really desperately hard. Yeah, because yeah. I, I that's my understanding with like my main exposure to getting into comedy is uh, uh, what is that uh, uh, Pete Holmes show on HBO? Oh, crashing! crashing yeah. yeah, it's similar. Yeah, and it sounds like uh, yeah. it's a it's a lot of pain for the first few years, and yeah. then eventually, it's always like it's always hard, but um, the reward as you get better is greater. It makes you feel real nice. What nice. is it like? Because well, I wanted to ask, like, what's one of your favorite memories? Because you've done so many. You're you're constantly doing shows, and mm-hmm. so and you get people that are like they're either following you or they start to recognize you, and like, what's one of the 
best moments you've had doing stand-up, either by somebody who's like said something to you or just a feeling you get on stage? Uh, it's always nice when uh, somebody who's like a, a regular at, you know, around town or a paid regular is somebody who's paid to come in every single night. And those are the people you see on TV or touring all around the country. When you get a compliment specifically about one of your jokes from somebody like that, like uh, Theo Vaughn or... He's great. Yeah. yeah he's real he's funny. real funny. Mm -hmm. Real funny guy. Yeah, and he, he came up to me after a show at the Laugh Factory and goes, I like that joke, man. <laughs> good joke. And then you just tell that one forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, well, this is the one, man. This um, is the secret. Yeah. Uh, Kirk Fox, uh, Andrew Santino, they've all, you know, you get validated after a while. Yeah. That's right. Nice things. Uh, Dean Del Rey just asked me to feature for him. Uh, in a show that he was doing in the belly room in the world famous uh, comedy store, I was I was gonna mess it up and say what we were saying before the joke factory. Yeah, Going <laughs> to the joke factory, uh, but it was like the best I'd ever done in that room, and I got to do 15 minutes, which is kind of a, a long period of time for somebody who isn't a regular. Yeah, and uh, that felt really good. It just feels good to be able to do good consistently because it's so rocky for so long. Mm -hmm. I've been to a, a number of your shows and they're yes, always a blast. Thank they're you. always really fun. They're you came really cool. when we used to be at this place called the Formosa all the time. Yes. <laughs> which was, I guess it's like a Hollywood staple and like Elvis used to go there and stuff. But it, For his stand-up. He used to yeah, go there yeah, and try yeah, out yeah. jokes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what do you, what do you think of this? <laughs> it's uh, that place was awesome. It is since like closed down or whatever. We, I but, didn't know. Uh, no, we used to be in there at least like once a it's week. Because you stopped showing up, and yeah. had to close <laughs> it down. Sam stopped paying the bill. <laughs> but no, that was a real fun time. Mm -hmm. So, like, what is the for people that would want to get in the comedy? What do you have any like input for them? Mainly, what's like, that girl's phone number? That <laughs> <just> <laughs> <said>? <laughs> uh, well, that's. Uh, Northeastern Connecticut, specific. Uh -huh. So fly to Connecticut. So yeah. what you have to do first is fly to Connecticut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, then you make your way west. Yeah, then, but then you take a train to New York, and yeah. after you've done that for a few years, then you come back to LA. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Don't start in LA. No, 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 no. no. Um, I would just say do it as much as possible. Try to find an open mic around you, mm -hmm. and then uh, just know that it's going to be bad for a long time. We were talking about this the other day. A friend of mine was bummed out that her friend was quitting comedy. Mm -hmm. And I was like, don't be bummed out. That's how we weed ourselves out. Mm -hmm. like, there's no hierarchy. Like there's no, um, there's no boss of comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the only reason there's not a billion uh, comedians is because eventually you either lose the passion for it or you don't think you're funny enough <laughs> <laughs> or uh, whatever self doubt overcomes you or yeah. whatever it is. We're but, all familiar. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of LA, a lot of self doubt here. Yeah. Mostly self doubt. Yeah. <laughs> it's our main export. That yeah. <laughs> it's our industry of choice out I, here. I had yeah. a joke locked and loaded. That was better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was that better. And, and dirty puddle water. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just do it as much as possible, and if you love it, you'll you'll keep doing it, and if you don't, you'll get a safer job. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, it's interesting. Four hundred one k. Yeah, yeah. You'll figure out what life insurance is. Oh, yeah. you might be able to get a house at some point. Yeah, yeah. by yourself, Lucky not you. even with four dudes. Yeah, You're all by yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. insane. You can get a house. You can go visit your friends with that house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you have so many friends with the houses. You don't even need to stay in yours, yeah. man. Yeah, you're hundred percent right. No, but it's true because <laughs> you put the comedian friends up in your guest house. They're, they're, wow. <laughs> Because <laughs> uh, like like a lot of people moved out here to do do my thing or whatever, and I used to be bummed when people would like bail, mm. and now it's like no, good, good leave. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and that's that's fine. Yeah. It's not everybody's survival of the fittest, man. Like right? get out of here, be happy. Not everybody's path, and you you start to I don't know you you respect people's work ethic as yeah. you get older. I think you see that that person like maybe didn't start off as strong, but they're like killing it, and they're going about it the right way, and they're putting in the work to get better before they get. They want to get better more than they want to get famous. I mm -hmm. like those. those yeah, 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 yeah. Those are the ones I just you had group crazy for. deja vu just now. <laughs> to what? It's a weird feeling. To this conversation, yeah. dude. Yeah, my friend Alex messed me up bad. He, I, <laughs> my friend Alex from home just moved in with us. Yeah. And he was like, "What do you think deja vu is?" He, we were just having one of those conversations <laughs> yeah. late at night. And he goes, "I think it's, uh, it's a bunch of previous lives or uh, parallel lives." And you died at that moment in one of them, and that's your spawn point. 
Oh. And you're going back at that point. So I one, like that theory. in some universe we had this conversation. Why did you and I died. Right here? <laughs> what, what happened to you? Died right here. Me? We, need to, we need to check our fire codes here or something. Am I like we sitting do... in a puddle surrounded by wires? <laughs> there, there, <laughs> there are wires just arcing out. There's a lot of wires yeah. in here. There are yeah. so many wires. Um, um, Roxy stabbed me at <laughs> one point. Maybe like, I have a sharp Pikachu here and I know how to use it. Uh, uh, some questions from the Discord from you from Jelani. Hendricks, uh, how do you get better at doing crowd work and how do you deal with hecklers? Oh man, hi Jelani. Your name is Jelani. His, her name? Jelani. Jelani. Gender doesn't matter, I suppose. <laughs> um, I, the, their name. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, the name. Uh-huh. Uh, crowd work came from doing music, funny enough, like see, being 16 years old and traveling across the country and playing to like the bartender and the bartender's dog uh-huh. and like really just being bored and wanting to connect with the audience and making ho- hopefully their experience the best it could possibly be and then now I always feel like like some some places really frown upon crowd work but it's my favorite thing because I don't think that anyone wants to like sit down and know that they're being told a joke like they 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 like just hearing somebody talk and, and getting your, you know, learning about you or yeah. your perspective or whatever. So when you do crowd work and you, you make them feel involved to a certain extent, you make it feel like um, like that's kind of like a once in a lifetime opportunity that, that is only happening in that room at that time. And it feels really special and they, they leave with a good feeling from that. I like that because um, there are a couple, I mean, there's like there's comedy shows of different kinds all over LA and mm-hmm. like it's it's fun when you can go to the ones where it's like don't record don't bring out your phone I don't want yeah. you taking I don't want you taking any video because it's like uh, they this is something that's fully original for you guys and yeah. we want you to be able to like uh, I saw Middle Distance Schwartz and the way they explained it was like we want you to have a story that you can never explain to your friends <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's too complicated it's inside jokes it's something yeah. that only happen in the moment and that's what makes it so special yeah yeah absolutely mm-hmm. how much of good comedy do you think comes from boredom because I know when we were going <laughs> to source fed a lot of our the jokes that we felt were the best was just because we were bored that day yeah but that doesn't mean other people won't think it's funny good point. That's, so a solid I, point. that's a good lesson I don't know percentage wise yeah. But probably a lot. I think mm. about a lot of stuff while I'm pooping. Yeah, and it's a good time. Really, there's not that much else to do. Yeah. You know? But think about life. Yeah. 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 You through. don't always want to be on your phone while you're pooping. No, Sometimes you want to just, yeah, be yourself. Solve some problems. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? That's, you know? two, that's two birds. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you have another question? Yeah, you do. Uh, that's why they call also, number two. Jelani would like you to know that he's a guy. Okay, thank you. No, Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Um, Ken Thora says, is he going to come back to the East Coast anytime soon? I'm asking from Boston. From Boston. Not to Boston, but I'll be in Nashville at the beginning of November. Mm -hmm. But I would love to come to Boston soon. We kind of want to do a a thing that I probably shouldn't talk too much about. Uh, But you're going to do it anyway. But I'm going to a little bit because (laughs) it might not happen and then we can forget this conversation. (laughs) Exactly. Um, But I want to shoot a special that takes place over like four or five shows going from Chicago to Connecticut. And I want Boston to be one of those. I would love to do Chicago, Boston, New York, and Connecticut, at least if not, maybe Philly in there somewhere. That'd be awesome. Rad. But the idea is that it would, uh, no, I don't want to give away the creative. <laughs> oh God, I almost don't want to. Another this question. Is very is <laughs> yeah, let's just figure it out. We've had this conversation before. <laughs> Uh, Cage96 wants to know, Mike, what would your reaction be if Steve said, my work here is done, and then just ascended into the sky? That's a thing that she yeah. doesn't know. No, I, actually, know what that actually is. I do because oh, of the live the, show. The 100th episode. Yeah. You do know yeah. what that is. The yeah. answer is still the same. Yeah. It's been still three same? years. No, yeah, yeah, no the answer is the same. Chipotle. I get it. Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I, yeah. I feel like you're not growing. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that's why eventually you died in this show. <laughs> that's why Steve came back. He was so upset with the answer to that question. I don't know, man. I just feel like, look, I look like this. No one would believe me. <laughs> if I was like, and then Steve shot up into in space. space. No one would be like, okay, Mike. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you, you want to distance yourself something. from where you don't want to be the last person he saw. Right. Because so then like, people will be like, but what? Dude, I'll pose this question to to the three of you. Yeah. What would you? What situation would you rather find yourself in? <laughs> Every one of your friends looking at you like you're out of your goddamn mind, uh-huh. or eating a burrito. <laughs> well, <laughs> another question from Three Eyed Dra- Three Eyed Raven. I don't know why. Is that a boys or girls? Name? <laughs> no. That's I, a boy. I'm clear. 
think it is though. Where is the best place to think and write jokes? Parentheses for Mike. Uh-huh. Uh, for me, it's always by myself and <laughs> like in walks in between going to places. Got to write notes on the phone. Yeah, walks or long drives is the best. I, but whenever I'm like on the way to a show. I won't listen to the radio on my way to or from a show. I won't listen to the radio, and that's mostly just to come up with like different combinations and like think out a set or, or something like that. And it's so easy to just like turn on a podcast or music and like turn your mind off, and then like and that's awesome. It's like mm-hmm. being in a time machine. Like it makes <laughs> long drives and and plane rides and everything go by faster. But if walks are my favorite, I would say moving and being outside mm-hmm. and listening to other people's conversations and seeing what comes out of that. Is, and take that joke. Is, <laughs> yeah, is, 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 uh, working on, on your jokes and setting up a set similar to how you would have to organize music when you were playing in a band and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, especially the set list thing because you want to take people, you want it to make sense. Yeah. You know, and sometimes I'll go out there with just like a collection of jokes that really have nothing to do with each other and that's, that's all well and good. But then the crowd work kind of ties it all in and makes it all make sense Mm. but sometimes if I'm like how can I go from this to this and like crafting that's my favorite thing about stand up is that it's like this jigsaw puzzle that's never done and like you change a piece a day and it takes forever and then you die before it's finished (laughs) (laughs) cool that's what happened yeah 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 yeah. question from the from in here yeah okay okay from Maggie Mike who are some of your favorite comedians at the moment oh my god at the moment uh, my voice cracked that's how excited I was um, uh, Andrew Santino uh, Chris D'Elia is very Chris D'Elia just sounds and acts like all of my friends from home so it's a very comforting thing to listen to his podcast I saw him at a movie theater did you really? Yeah. that's all I got where yeah. you got Sam? Uh, he was sitting behind me I saw uh, the new Sicario yeah and my girlfriend was like what if Chris D'Elia was here I was like you better shh <laughs> right there <laughs> you better not say anything back he's the tall dude sitting right behind yeah. us yeah. he has long legs did he kick your chair no he didn't but that's nice it, the, my girlfriend and Roxy you both have bad eyesight you're gonna get us in trouble <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bad eyesight yeah. and loud voices yeah. <laughs> I was at that premiere with you and I sliced open my leg on the chair coming to say hi to you what mm-hmm. oh Gross. no <laughs> um, I uh, have one one final question for you because yeah. I want to play some games. I'm really excited. Oh, about hell yeah. That. We're going to play video games? Oh, we have one video game. It's okay. very exciting. Nice. Got a lot but it's not what it. we promised it would be, is it, Sam? Nope. Uh, <laughs> it's a very fun game, and she's upset because we're not playing Spider Man. But my question for you oh. is um, oh. I'm sorry. What happened? Who can't afford Spider Man? <laughs> 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 uh, but what, I wanted to know what uh, it, the goal for you or what's a high point or a milestone that you want to hit with comedy. Is it Netflix special or is it? Letterman gives you finger guns on the way out of the comedy factory. On the way being <laughs> escorted out of the... Yeah. Uh, both. I would love to do a late night spot eventually. I, I think that I, I will have a comedy special eventually. Just will. It, it, just a matter of where it goes. Um, I want to tour as much as possible, and I want to get that house that we were talking about before. Amen. It doesn't even need to be that big. Yeah. It's yeah. just got to be a house. No, it just has to be a house. Yeah. yeah. yeah it could be yeah. dilapidated yeah. in like West Virginia somewhere. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Exactly. I won't even go see it. Yeah. I'll still live That's in an apartment, that apartment here. But I want to. I want to have it. I want to know that so I have it. So they know it's there. You know what I mean? <laughs> this and that's the, uh, the most part. important part about comedy is getting that house. Yeah. And yeah. I'm very, uh, thank you for coming on and talking about this because this is cool because yeah. we want to bring on more people and talk about what they're into so we can share with you. If you're thinking about getting into stand-up comedy, that's the roadmap. So there you go. We just gave it all to you. So you can just replay that's that. That's it. That's mm-hmm. the whole thing. And then go tell jokes. <laughs>